Hi, my name is Steve Foxworth and I am a member of the ELPO as well as an instructor and an examiner. And today we're going to go over and try to give you a study guide to help you prepare for the certifications that we have. The three certifications we have is a live sole hoof mapping certification, um, your barefoot trim certification, and then we will be going over your um, farrier or horseshoeing certification. So in this demonstration, we're going to be going over the um, certification or the protocol for the barefoot trimming. And each and every one of you will, that are trying to take the certification will get the orange laminated card. Okay, And this will be your guide for how to practice. And once again, it's the same thing like mapping. If you go through and you follow the steps on this card with each and every foot you trim it'll go faster and faster and faster and by the time you get here you'll be pretty pretty well prepared to take this exam so before i get started on going through that i want to cover just a couple of things and that is when trimming a horse for barefoot to to not have shoes on there's two things that we're trying to do one is to minimize distortions because we know that distortions can cause strain on the connective tissue around the joint but the second part of that is that we need to be very careful in leaving enough protection for these horses to go and do their jobs or to even go back out to pasture. And the last thing that we want to do here at this, with this certification and with this organization is to have any of these horses be sore or limp or, or be stressed in any way. So as we go through this, we're going to keep those two things in mind. So as we get started, the first thing that we're going to go through, is just like when we were doing our mapping, is we're going to recognize the distortions. Because like I said, we're going to, our goal is to minimize the distortions and the barefoot trim and still leave some protection. So as we look at this foot, once again in this environment, you want to clean it up, make sure you get a good picture of what the foot looks like. I am going to find my dimple first, just like I would if I was going through and doing my mapping certification. Three ways to do that is one, find a flattened area. Two is where the frog and heel come together. And the third is the central sulcus. So I'm going to clean up this frog just a little bit so that I've got a really good clear picture of my central sulcus. Now it seems to, to be that the frog is a pretty safe area. Even if this horse is going to be going out and doing a job uh, to clean this up and exfoliate it in a manner, it doesn't seem to inhibit them, to, uh, inhibit them from doing their job in any way. <clears throat> so I'm going to just kind of find some of these loose tags, peel that up a little bit. I know I said I was going to check my central sulcus, but I have to find some of those loose areas. Now that I've cleaned that out a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead, look where this V is, and make a mark of where my dimple is. So on this foot, you can see now I've verified where my dimple is. That's important for static reference to help us recognize distortions. So I'm going to make a mark here where the last weight bearing portion of this heel is and the last weight bearing portion of this heel is. Okay, so we're going to evaluate our heels. I'm going to draw a line on the ridge of where the bar is currently. I'm going to look at what my frog looks like. It seems like it's fairly narrow. Okay, So as we go through this, if I look at where my heels are, this heel looks like it's slightly forward than this heel. This bar has got a pretty good bend to it. This one does as well, but they look fairly even. This heel is slightly more forward than this one is. So if you look at where your line is, this distance is a little bit longer than this distance. Um, the apex of my frog, like I said, is slightly narrowed. Um, it's got a little bit of distortion to it, but all in all, it's not that bad. And if we take and look at where 
an estimate of our widest part of our foot. And we double that, our toe length is almost right on. There's maybe just, just ahead of a quarter of an inch in front of that is where this foot is rolled over. So our heels are a bit forward. This heel's a little bit more forward. The bend in this is a little bit more forward. Nail, uh, frog's a little narrow. And my toe length is actually quite good. So now that we've recognized our distortions, um, we're gonna go ahead and exfoliate the foot. The first thing we're gonna do is exfoliate the frog. And once again, it's a very important piece of this because the frog is what gives us a guide. And if you can see, I just stuck my knife underneath the apex and can lift up here. And I'm just gonna pop that piece off of there. The apex of our frog is gonna tell us how much sole depth there is here. And which is extremely important when we're dealing with a horse that's going to be barefoot. I'm gonna clean up my tags just a little bit more. So I'm looking for where the tissue changes. So now I've exfoliated this frog. As you can see, there's still a little bit of you know, all the loose tags are gone, but I haven't overdone this. I cleaned out a good area in uh, the back portion of my frog and my heel so that I can get a good trim back here. But one of the most important things we need to see is the apex of the frog and, and the depth from here to here, okay? And on this particular horse, there isn't a really a whole lot of depth. You can see there's a ridge right here, okay? but. The sole has actually exfoliated in these areas, which is right at the back part of your pillars, which is what we're gonna use as a guide, because this is fairly level here and here. Um, with knowing that there's not much depth here and there's not a lot of distortion here, the last thing we wanna do is start trimming all this out and making this area tender or sore to where they can't do their job. So exfoliating your frog is important so that we can find the depth so we know how much that we can leave uh, to keep the horse comfortable. So after looking at this, knowing that, that this is exfoliated fairly well, I don't feel like I need to go in here and investigate this much more than what's already here, and leaving this little bit of protection here is important. So there's not a whole lot of distortion this part forward. The toe length is in a good place, and the depth isn't so much that I feel I need to go in there and start investigating that. So if you watch me from this section back is where I'm gonna be looking at um, my trim. You can see my guidelines are gonna be the bars, okay, and the heel positions. This heel is a little bit shorter and this heel is a little bit longer. So you don't always need to go in there with your knife or, or I'm sorry, your nippers you can start to trim a foot and leave them comfortably barefooted and by just uh, minimizing the distortions. So we're gonna start our exfoliation and, and I feel pretty comfortable uh, exfoliating the back half here um, and start to minimize these distortions and I need to do that so I can get a little bit better reference on a map and make sure that that's fairly accurate. I'm gonna start with my knife if I can't, can't get it going. Oh look pops out there fairly easy. So you can see that as I just took a couple of knife swipes, this bar actually straightened out quite nicely. Okay, and that's what we're looking for when we're doing this. You can also see that this, this part of the sole blends in with the front part that I'm not gonna get, go any further on. So using that as your guide, is pretty good. I just hit waxy material here. So there isn't any reason for me to go much further. Do the same thing on the outside. You can see this, as I start to take the top layer off, this still has a fracture here and here. And this outside or lateral bar 
seems to have a little bit more distortion to it. You can see I took a couple more swipes where this one became straight. There's a little bit of a swirl in the tissue here, which gives me an indication or a reason to trim that out a little bit more or investigate it a little bit more. <clears throat> As I go through that, if you look very closely, this bar comes down, goes out, and comes back in, and there's a swell right here of tissue in this area. And that's the whole, that is an indicator as we're going through this, that it's okay to exfoliate that a little bit further. And as we get there, this starts to straighten out quite nicely. So I'm gonna check here in, in the heel of my, or in my heel buttress a little bit and make sure I clean out fairly well in this area until I get wax. Because I wanna do a good job of still having a pretty good medial lateral balance. Okay, so as I've done that and I've exfoliated this, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a little bit more wall height on the lateral side than there is on the medial side, which will go along with how this bar was more bent than this bar. I took one or two knife swipes out of here and this one straightened up and I had to investigate this quite a bit more to get that bar to straighten up. So now that I've exfoliated this area, it's, it's hard to see, but this actually transitions into the front quite nicely. And the solar surface, it doesn't dig in and then come back up. So I've was felt pretty, fairly comfortable on the pillar area. And I've hit the waxy in my quarters and at my seed of corn. So <clears throat> doing this map, we've already found our dimple. The second thing we do is find the true apex. You can see that we've exfoliated that and made a mark. We're going to double our central sulcus. To double check that, you can see that that's what uh, lines up fairly close to the true apex of the frog. So the third thing that we're gonna do in our map is find the widest part of the foot. If you take an inch back, you can see that that's where our mark is for the widest part of the foot. And you can see I've already kind of drawn these lines where our bars terminate. You can always take your knife in and just feel around through that swell. This one's real nice on this medial side of where it stops. So second thing is where our bars terminate. First, inch back, bars end. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line right on the edge of the sole. I'm gonna clean this one up just a little bit because I don't have a good clear picture there. Once again, if you start with this edge down the center, you have less to drag it this way. Set that across there and mark the widest part of our foot. And now we found <coughs> the widest part of the foot. The fourth thing we're gonna do is find the tip of our bone. If we set this at about an inch and three quarters, and go forward, we have the tip of P3 here. So an inch and three quarters is the tip of P3. It's really easy to move that out to two inches. Mark our quarter of an inch in front of that. Take our straight edge. Set it across the toe. Now we have it marked out. You can see this pillar region here is fairly level with the wall height already. So this is gonna be an area in my trim that I'm not gonna get into. 
Before I do anything else, the importance of having a map is to evaluate your ratios. So if we take a look at what's current, this is a little over two inches, and that's two and a half. So we've got a little bit there to be able to roll back in the front part of that foot. So it looks like evaluating this, if we're gonna be able to get our heels back to our dimple and increase the back half of the foot, that we will be able to achieve uh, at least a 50-50. All right, so now that I've got it mapped out, once again, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stay away from this area here. Pretty much all the work I have to do is the back half of the foot. Uh, if I look at this, this heel, there's a little bit more height here than there is here. Um, I probably just use a little bit of a nipper cut and mostly my rasp, put a roll in the front part of this foot and uh, dress the flares. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, start this trim. I'm actually gonna start just behind my pillar here with my nipper slightly tilted out. cutting through the quarter and just bringing it up ever so slightly into the heel. You can see just with that nipper cut, I've pretty much got it fairly close to the dimple. Same thing on this side. Bringing my nipper upwards. I'll take my rasp. Rasp a nice flattened spot where a portion of my bar and my heel come together because we want a fairly good landing in the back part of that foot. So I feel pretty comfortable with the back half of my foot. You can see we've increased the distance back here, uh, gotten it fairly close to the dimple in the back part of the foot. Now I know in the protocol it says that we should <coughs> go ahead and nip her through the front, but as I said before, there isn't a whole lot of depth here and we're going to be fairly conservative and just create a rock or a roll in the foot with the rasp. It just doesn't need to be a really aggressive thing. Uh, we've talked about having a rule of thumb. Okay, so if you put your thumb underneath there, that's all really what you're looking for. Just need to have a start, and believe it or not, they'll take over from there. So even though it looks like I don't have it all the way back to here, the foot is a little bit cupped, my last weight-bearing point here and here is where my roll begins. So that is rolled nicely in the front. The last thing we're gonna do is look at our uniform hoof wall thickness. And as you can see here with where the sole ends, it's a bit flared in the toe pillars. So if I look at this from the bottom and just check my ratios from where my heels end to the widest part of the foot, and I double that, I have certainly achieved 50-50, actually slightly more in the back than there is in the front. So the last part of this is, is dressing your dorsal wall, and this horse doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, dorsal wall distortion or flare, but if you can see the wall starts to thicken, and before I pull it forward, it seems to be very helpful to just sort of get a guide so that you don't overdress the foot. That close. 
so you can see we've got a much more uniform wall thickness. So when I pull this forward, I won't overdress it. The last portion of this is to pull the foot forward on some sort of a stand. It generally helps stabilize the foot and uh, get rid of the flares. Once again, this horse doesn't have much, so I've already sort of made a guide from the bottom. There's no need to overdress this. You can see that there was a slight deviation here, but that foot is fairly straight from the dorsal wall down. 